Dude, I'm so happy to hear that. Let's go. Yeah, also, let me just take a minute. Here, let's redo the intro because now people are in here. <laughs> um, what's up, guys? I'm Gabriel Quinn. I'm a concept artist and character designer. And uh, today we're going to be talking about these two characters. I also want to take a second to welcome all the new subscribers. Oh my gosh. Uh, every time I refreshed each day, it was like a hundred of you guys joined in. So that's really exciting. I think I think earlier in the week I was at like 1400 or something. And now we're at 1700 and a half subscribers. So really, really excited that so many people are are joining the community and saying what's up. Just I'm here to welcome you with open arms. If you're if you're watching this back as a VOD or if you're here live, it's so awesome. Kayton says, hello, Gabriel. Hope you enjoy Lapbox. Thank you so much, man. Let's go. Um, yeah, so cool. So we got young Thomas, Uncle Lawrence. We got this kind of dynamic here. And the keystone of this relationship was sort of their neediness for each other. But what I want to really bring a lot of attention to, because I think it's very, very relevant, is actually that initially... The only thing I had for these two was this initial sketch. I was drawing it for a while. This will be kind of crunchy. Sorry. That's not that crunchy. Nice. This is why we work high res, baby. So these two. So the first drawing I had was actually before I even had Thomas, right? So Thomas wasn't even in the picture yet. It was just this guy because I wanted to design a character based off of this, you know, strange uh, Italian weapon from the late... I want to say 1800s called the spadone it's a really really cool weapon um and i got really interested in it how it was used at the time it was you know in this in this uh brief period of um warfare transitioning between you know like armies knighted warfare all that stuff into using guns and that kind of form of warfare so it was a skirmishing weapon and sort of i started to imagine who would wield this right it's like very uh, a lot of flowing, sweeping movements to kind of keep as many people back as possible. It was much more of an equalizer weapon and kind of a get away from me weapon. So it was mostly for defense or for kind of crowd control. So if you had five guys uh, and you were one guy with a spadone, you could threaten maybe five of them at a time with the kind of movements and sweet, sweeping knowledge and stuff. So I was really interested in that. And I'm like, well, who would wield this? You know, I started looking at kind of costuming elements from that time and kind of develop a sort of court outfit really really rough sketch um but i feel felt like he was kind of like purposeless or needed a friend i'm like who's gonna enable this guy to be the way he is and i kind of came up with this little scrappy character who eventually kind of became his nephew i kind of changed the proportions around a little bit as well but i wanted this kind of like easy breezy not so you know aware of what's going on kind of brilliant kind of knight figure and his little nephew squire who's like super stressed about everything he's kind of making everything happen um so i did some super rough sketches of these two characters super rough sketches here and i was he was kind of like <laughs> hello i'm uncle lawrence and i've got the sword and there's young thomas who's carrying the sword here's a, a terrible first layer of painting i was going to maybe paint them thank god i didn't um but yeah, I kind of did these guys. These kind of like, <laughs> Thomas is like, where the heck are we going? What are we doing? We don't have time. What's happening? He's got all this stuff. He's carrying everything. He's got the scabbard for the sword. And then I brought them into a, a you know, a kind of more stylized finish, cleaned it up a lot. Um, just kind of added some loose line art and made it sing in the ways that I could. I, I still left these ones very loose though, especially Lawrence is very loose here. This is pretty cool. Let's check the chat really quick. Sandman says, Gabe is an awesome drawing guy. Uh, let's all now watch him do magic and ask if he's willing to share his knowledge of magical art of drawing and world creating. Ha <laughs> that's really nice, Simon. Interesting to me, it looks like a shock troop weapon. Long and can scare off many enemies. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, at this time, what's interesting historically is like if you're if you're around in that kind of area of Italy and Spain, kind of the conflict that was happening was very localized. It was very, very localized. It was kind of like, you know, the the cities were sort of warring with each other it wasn't as centralized as it is now so the uh, the idea of an organized army it's like on a much smaller scale uh in this way in that in this era so there wouldn't be like maybe giant masses of forces moving around and doing a war in the same way it was very you know state dependent so if you were like a noble person traveling maybe you'd hire uh this guy to protect your caravan or something right you just or or whatever you know but I mean, if you guys are interested in the world building element to this, which uh, which I love, um, 
which I love talking about, and every character I make always has a world building element as well, uh, is that the world I imagine these two to live in is a world in which these kind of mercenaries, right? This guy would be a mercenary, a hired mercenary, and they would be hired to kind of sort of follow along and kind of like uh, be hired by maybe these very wealthy aristocrats or something, these very noble people who will... You know, okay, here's a cool parallel. So back in the day when people would duel with pistols, it would be this kind of thing where you'd show up and maybe no one would fire the gun. Maybe no one would kind of, uh, would actually carry it forward, but it was a show of like nobility and respect to just show up and be there, you know, prepared for lethality or something. So kind of that sort of motif of like nobility reputation all of that stuff i wanted to kind of carry that same motif into this world and but what if instead these wealthy people were hiring out these mercenaries and would sort of like bump into each other like on accident out in the field and uh they would have like a skirmish right where maybe it would be like non-lethal but still dangerous very dangerous kind of attacks and stuff and maybe some of the mercenaries know each other maybe they kind of have like rapport maybe they'll almost sometimes even fake a battle and be like oh, i lost last time you got to lose this time and blah, blah 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 you know take the l or take the win or something like that or maybe there are actual feuds between these mercenaries and maybe there is actual death on occasion so i feel like this guy really gets by playing a lot of social games and you know doing a lot of that stuff and he does definitely know how to fight but you know, maybe he's so well regarded that he hasn't had to really be on his toes in a very long time. So that's the kind of idea here. And maybe a point of conflict in this world is that he's going to actually have to fight somebody at some point. So that's kind of like some of the background lore between these guys, which I think you need when you're wanting to do a successful design. You need the context, you need the purpose, you need all this stuff. So, uh, yeah. Also, today's going to be a bit of a more brief stream, I think. Um, I have dinner plans with my wonderful family so i'm gonna go spend some time with them later um my our family member is in the city right now so i want to take the opportunity to spend some quality time and i'm on a plane tomorrow so so yeah so unfortunately no stream this thursday or friday so sad so sad but yeah i'm gonna pack tonight i'm excited for that which is cool i love packing it gets me excited about the journey about the travel I got to look up what the weather's going to be. Who knows what that's going to be and all that rah, rah, rah. Um, but yeah, Fernando Fernandez. What a name. Love that name. It says, reminds me of some banana motif. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Very good art. Hey, thanks. All right. So I was thinking today, you know, I've kind of, I've drawn these guys and I'm thinking like, I don't know, maybe I'll fix a couple things that I've, I haven't been able to fix, you know, a while ago. I did this, these character designs a while ago. So I'm like, hmm. Maybe there's something I want to fix here or there or something like that. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'll do some edits on this guy or kind of analyze my own design. And uh, maybe we'll do some sketches of the character, some expressions or something. Who knows what we'll have time for. Uh, Sam says family comes first. Family does come first. It's true. Also, if anyone has any questions about character design or about anything I'm talking about, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. This is a total interactive stream, so I'm here to answer any question as best I can, whether it's about life or art or whatever. Oh, also, before I forget, um, let's just pull up the... Wow. This is exciting. So, uh, returning viewers will know, uh, I have a course scheduled for uh, November. This is the course. It's for sale right now on Gumroad. You can buy a seat. There are 10 spots and there are only two left. So it starts in two weeks from today on the 6th of November or 13 days or whatever. But if you were interested in the course or you want to take my character design course, there's only two spots left. Um, it's going to be really exciting. Um, I've kind of gone through the whole thing in past streams. So I don't, I don't know if I want to waste any time today of today's stream going through, but you can read through the structure. Um, it's going to be very, uh, <laughs> It's going to be really good. The only thing that you should keep in mind is that um, you should be able to set aside five to eight hours a week to work on these assignments because they're, it's going to be a lot, but it's going to be a lot of really exciting stuff. Um, the only thing that I'll include here is that kind of sort of like the goals and outcomes you will be able to build on and use as a springboard these seven characters, these seven diverse characters you'll be designing into future ideas and learning. 
you'll refine your process and gain momentum to to continue creating characters that are evocative, have depth, and feel alive. So if you're wanting to improve the narrative around your characters, then um, yeah, this is this is the course for you, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, pretty darn cool. Whoa, the site always spazzes out. But yeah, the kind of overview is it's a seven week intensive course. It'll give you the opportunity to create and refine your character design process from the ground up through weekly, through weekly lectures focused on process and theory, using examples from your favorite shows and games, interactive demos where you'll see the design process happen in real time, and assignments that will cha challenge your creativity and problem solving skills. You will gain an understanding of the relationship between character and the larger story they are a part of, and the impact of informed world building and research on a character and their design process, and how to know when your ideas are successful. That one's really hard. Uh, but most of all, this course will leave you with a lasting attitude of joy, wonder, passion, and the urge to bring your authentic spirit back into your work and breathe life into the characters you design. So this, this course is really a love letter to kind of like even my past self who really needed to learn all the stuff I'm going to teach here. Um, and the assignments are really fun. They're going to be, uh, if you give a kid a sword, villains, simple heroes made better, knights and squires, which we're kind of doing today a little bit in this design process, animal sidekicks, why, when and why really, uh, dynamic pairings, and if they can fly. So those are going to be some really fun stuff. But the link to that course is in the description. Um, and there are two spots left. So the emails just went out today with kind of some preparation materials and essay assignments before the course starts and stuff so it's really exciting i'm really excited about it it's cool <laughs> i've been wanting to do this for a long time and i finally ironed out the time to make it happen which is exciting cool 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 cool. ulysses says yo everyone i have a question about character design should i start working on it even if my fundament fundamentals are still in development i tend to get frustrated because i can't even get my ideas correctly onto the paper yeah, so that's a great question, and it's kind of directly related to what I was just talking about. So the course I'm doing is is definitely for people who are on their way with their fundamentals, so they're able to draw characters um, because the assignment is going to be more about the idea and the story of the character, uh, refining that you know facet of knowledge and capacity. But if you can't actually draw characters and you're frustrated because you're like, I can't even draw these hands, I can't draw these heads, I don't know what to do, then it would definitely be beneficial for you to slam down on those fundamentals, get yourself some mileage, get going, get just, you know, get into it, doing it. However, um, if you only practice fundamentals, that's not good enough motivation for me at least. All I can talk about is my own experience. For me, it was never satisfying only working on fundamentals. I always went crazy. So let's see here. I designed and lined these guys, I'm pretty sure with my with my own brush that I made, my fun sketch brush. Yeah. Yep. So if you're unable to actually construct a body, it's going to be really frustrating for you to um, kind of go in and want to create some kind of bombastic character. However, um, you can learn the fundamentals while you are creating. And if you are not challenging yourself with subject matter that will test your capacity and your fundamentals, that's also a danger too. So I feel like a great method or one way that I personally developed my skill is through, you know, trying something I know I can't do or trying something difficult. Trying something hard. And then from trying something hard, you learn what you don't know, right? Try something hard. Learn what you don't know. And that, that is, you can do independently, but also you need feedback from people or feedback would make it a lot easier. Like someone can say, Hey, this anatomy is wrong. These clothing folds are wrong. This is wrong. Or maybe not successful towards the goal of the design, you know, whatever you want to say. Um, and then after learning what you don't know, you can learn. So you can actually gain knowledge. Knowledge. Gain knowledge practice and then circle right back 
trying something hard, right? So it's that kind of feedback loop where you are, but if you stay in your comfort zone or you stay only within the bounds of your of your current capacity, if you stay within those bounds, you'll never improve. And you see it all the time. Like this is kind of the epidemic of sort of like, I don't know, like deviant art OCs where they're all kind of like this and they all kind of have like a hoodie and they all kind of have their, their hands in their pockets. People get really good at drawing hands in pockets and maybe they're like a kind of an anime character or something and they have the same angle uh, and style of eyes as all the other characters they've done and they kind of do this and and the way they make it interesting is they kind of like do these things where they're like they're like possessed by a demon possessed by a dragon you know can can read your mind um you know uh uh has has adhd you know and then you kind of have the and then maybe it's cut off at the waist too so that's this is like and then people do maybe one like maybe like a hundred or two hundred of these across their art career their art journey or whatever um and that's not going to help you either so let's kind of be adventurous today in the spirit of this question and just kind of go for it so with these guys let's see <laughs> Whenever I become like self-aware, um, I always like freeze and I'm like, wait, what am I doing again? What am I doing right now? Um, so yeah, let's do this thing. We've got young Sebastian, Uncle Lawrence, not young Sebastian, young young Thomas, Uncle Lawrence. I think I had another character named Sebastian. I don't really remember. But yeah, let's do this thing, baby. So, but you got to start somewhere. So drawing any character is going to be beneficial for you right but these guys that i'm drawing here they're kind of there's a lot of fundamentals being used here for instance but also just some kind of graphic elements too uh, but let's see what do we want to draw maybe maybe we'll do some more of thomas or maybe we'll do some more of hmm, do we need more of thomas maybe maybe we'll do some of thomas for fun So here he is. Here's our boy. He's hanging out. And uh, as I've sketched out this head, you know, I've given myself, oh, M3 says, made it again. I've been refreshing my computer every 10 minutes for the last two hours waiting for the stream. Oh, <laughs> man. Damn, glad you made it. Sorry. Uh, sorry this one took so long, guys. Took me a long time to set this one up. I had to do, there was so much logistics. Turns out scheduling and like doing logistics for, you know, a class of 10 people, it's like, it's, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Making sure everything's good, making sure everything's set, prepared, so you're not ever leaving people high and dry. So I'm just kind of rem reminding myself of the shapes I used by kind of mirroring the drawing kind of on the right here. So he has this big nose very French-esque nose, very Disney short animation short nose, kind of a slopey mouth, teeth coming out, a little bit of a chin. Not The chin's not too far forward, so the head shape's probably going to be like if it was side on. Chin kind of goes back a bit. Nose would definitely come forward. Kind of that sort of vibe, right? Maybe not that far back. We don't want to do our boy dirty here. Make him too squinky. I don't have a real adjective. Sonny says French? <laughs> Never. Never. Now this guy's probably a little French. These guys are probably a little bit French, but they're allowed. They're allowed to be a little bit French. A little bit French. I thought it was Italian. Well, the weapon is from Italy, personally. The weapon name is from Italy. There are many variants across Europe, but the weapon was used throughout as well. Throughout Europe. But Spadone is the Italian name. But it's similar to 
something like a Zwei Hander, except that it is, doesn't have the same purpose. The Zwei Hander was really useful for breaking pike lines in, uh, in combat by knights and other warriors versus a Spadone, which is really just for kind of keeping dudes back and poking them, poking them here and there. M3 says, the way you draw hair is so scrumptious. Hey, thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Le Chevalier. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm just kind of reminding myself of the shapes here. And you want to be sort of clear on your forms, in my opinion, when you start breaking into characters and stuff. So kind of plugging this into my subconscious. Didn't get too much time to draw today. So I'm, this is kind of my, my warm up and my drawing for today. Definitely got to draw every day if you can. Right. So even in what I'm doing here, um, to the question earlier about feeling like you can't draw characters, uh, I know I'm just kind of like busting out these shapes, figuring this stuff out. For me, I see all the mistakes, obviously. I know not everyone sees all the mistakes I'm making, but there are myriad However, things are going pretty well for this drawing. I'm looking at it again. Ears a little lower down, which is not anatomically correct, but we're making it correct for the character because it's pushed. Um, Perse Percy is French. Percy, oh, fair. Fair enough. Fair enough, Sonny, fair enough. Ulysses says, sorry for the late reply. Thank you for your time and answer about fundamentals. Noted everything. Oh, great. Yeah. And it's in the video. So, you know, you can return back to it when it becomes a video later. But even in what I'm doing here, I'm kind of putting fundamentals into practice that maybe are not super clear. Like, for instance, I understand that on this side, oh, there's a plane or a, a, heli a helicopter, helicopter, helicopter. So, for instance, here, I'm understanding that I'm understanding the forms, but I'm kind of drawing the silhouette of the forms without drawing all the cross contours. So when you're learning art, also a cross contour line, because I know not everybody knows everything. A cross contour line is a line that describes the form. Uh, so, for instance, if we had a cylinder, right, just like a basic cylinder here. Um, this edge has disappeared. A cross contour line would be here and it describes the form, right? So if you look at old, which is that it's curved. Um, if I did this, it does not describe the form. It is kind of confusing actually. It kind of makes you wonder what's happening. It's almost like a curve into a straight back into a curve in theory and it would, it would pinch here and here. Um, but a lot of superheroes is just a very, very... Um, clean physique with oftentimes just a lot of cross contour lines uh describing their suit which is just kind of elastic around a strong physique with different patterns and stuff and she says have you built a little bit of a world around them already nothing illustrated but everything up here baby everything up here i just did a little bit of a lore dump earlier so i probably won't repeat it all I'll say is these two are, one is a mercenary, mercenary and one is a squire. And the world is kind of like a, a world where mercenaries with a great reputation are very similar to like knights in terms of respect. And this guy, who is one of our guys, he had to work very hard to gain the amount of respect that he gained. But he's been in the game for such a long time, he hasn't really been truly tested in a while so this is kind of like maybe gonna be um maybe like a fall of grace is his story arc for this world who knows Ooh, let's make this on a separate layer just so we have it boop everything in the chrome dome for real <laughs> it's funny um but yeah, so here, for instance, the cheeks are full on this side. I actually drew this a little bit incorrectly. Yeah, never going to be like really accurate or really perfect here. 
but the cheek on this side is also going to be full. I implied it a tiny bit with a line here, like a little bit of this kind of mirrored shape, but I didn't actually add form. So if we were to add form, we would see how it kind of hooks around on this side too. And it would go, well, he has cheekbones here. So then it would, it would end there. His cheekbones kind of stop it. So they would kind of conflate the shape into the sort of eyelids here, which are their, their own shape. But this kind of stuff you'll learn and get better at as you go, understanding the forms that you're drawing and, and stuff. center of the nose is here so it comes up and then over up and then over they actually come down a little bit shorter heads heads a little bigger here than I've drawn it but like you can see sort of like there are forms here that I'm not necessarily graphing out as if it was like a 3d model but when I draw it I'm drawing the silhouette of those forms as I understand them in my mind so that's also good. It's kind of the same with hair, you know, hair is, is, uh, has volume and has form. It's not just like hair strands that you're drawing. You are drawing in the forms, the big voluptuous forms. I've been re slowly refining, uh, my technique for drawing hair for a while now. There was a time when it was pretty much just kind of indulgent patterns with not a lot of construction. I can even show an example of that maybe, unless I've archived it. Ooh. Let's see if we can, um, let's see if we can. Let's see if we can find like an old version maybe of something. Yeah, something like this. Okay, great. Great. This is an old drawing I did a while ago uh, that's on Instagram and it's kind of like, there are forms happening here, but it is pretty well, actually, no, there are some forms here that kind of make sense. But um, one thing I'm missing here is a, is a reality because in truth, the head actually extends farther back than I have it here. I can show you. There's an anatom anatomical mistake here. Really, the skull would extend like all the way, all the way back at least like at least this much so the hair is kind of a bit short <laughs> if that makes sense so the way to fix that would definitely be like extending that out a bit in the back even that feels more realistic and it's kind of messed up right or that feels more correct in any case i used to have a lot more of a I don't know. I feel like I've still maintained the energy, but I've made it a little bit more in reality for production art purposes. I used to primarily just do illustration. So moving into doing work for animation and games, you have to make it, make it actually usable. All right. So we got a little guy here. Cool. Yeah, this will be a pretty short stream, I think. Yeah, sorry for the short one um, last Friday as well. It's been so busy preparing for Lightbox. It's kind of a uh, kind of insane, but we're getting it done for sure. Salmon says I can't draw hair. You absolutely can draw hair. That is a lie. Uh, anyone can draw anything. You just need a method for learning that is good. You know who has a good video? Cynics has a great video. Cynics hair. Let's find it. Cynics anatomy quick tips. It's a great video. Absolutely great. Ah, oh my gosh. I forgot to announce that I was live to all the, the Discord. Oopsie. Oopsie. Here, check this out. All right, um, 
Michelangelo F says hello, hello. Welcome, Michelangelo. Michelangelo is a recent patron. Thank you so much to all the patrons that make the stream possible. I would not be able to do this without you guys. You guys rock. Seriously. Um, oh my gosh. We had a really fun time uh, last week during one of the... Uh, during one of the patron exclusive discord challenges which we <laughs> which we did i can i want to show a little bit of it we did like a super intense uh character design challenge where we do character design challenges three times a week on the discord which is available through the patreon in the description um where we basically only had five minutes to design a character then only 10 minutes to design one and then 15 minutes and then we got 30 minutes and they were based on random words. So after five minutes, you got a new set of random words, two random words. So it was really intense. I can show my result from that because I do it with everybody because, you know, camaraderie. We all do it together. It's stuff that I would be doing by myself anyway. So it's great to be able to include people in a space and give people the option to support the stream if they want to. So people can join the Discord through the Patreon, which also link in the description and in the channel and all that stuff. Um, so definitely join the Patreon if you if you want to support the stream. But yeah, we had the prompt pause and nutty, and I did like a time a time stopping Muppet Frogman. Uh, it was a little bit crazy, kind of Mad Hatter vibes with a stopwatch. And this was in five minutes, so there's like no time. And you got to think of the idea. You got to think of everything. <laughs> Ayub said, how can you forget about us? Bro, Ayub, I would never forget about you, bro. Never, ever. I would never do it. Um, <laughs> except that I did. Ah. Here, I'm going to ping that I'm live to the to the folks in the in the Discord. But yeah, so... So we did this version. That was kind of hilarious. All righty. Sweet. And then I did for the 10 minute challenge, it was safe ahead. So I did this like lantern bearing little hat having guy a little poofy guy holding like a lantern leading these little creatures along the 10 minute i think was my weakest one um the 15 minute one was funny it was uh, unadvised saw so i did this uh chainsaw strange lumberjack who's gonna remove this wise old tree but that i feel like it was all practice for the last one because the last one which was 30 minutes it was passenger and race and i kind of had the idea of like what if what if like uh there was like a carriage and uh, it had to be specially designed for like this giant rhino man. And that was really fun to draw, kind of like a wagon being pulled by some creatures or whatever. But this like giant passenger was just like, I don't know. It was a cool idea, a cool silhouette for me. So that was really fun. If you want to join in for those challenges, it's only three bucks a month in the Patreon. And you can join and have a good time with all of us peoples. All right, marketing over. <laughs> Welcome, Game Lord. Welcome, everybody. Michelangelo F says, that's awesome. I'll remember to turn on my notifications so I can join. Yes, dude, you definitely should. I mean, I'll show you where you can do that. So in the section of the Discord that we have, which this is the wonderful Discord, there's a, a get roles area and you can receive notifications by clicking on the little arm emoji in the eyes. One pings you for the challenges when we do it and one pings you for the live streams when we do it, which is cool. So that's a fun time. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's really, really great. But yeah, super grateful to all the incredible patrons. You guys are amazing. I'm, I'm very grateful for the patrons. You guys are great. So yeah, cross contours, fundamentals. We're drawing Thomas. All right, now let's actually draw him for real. So I like this side profile. I feel like the side profile is working. There's a couple things that aren't quite right. One of them is that the mouth isn't big enough, I don't think. Yeah, that's getting there. I feel like the eyes need to recede a little bit more. And the eyelids need to be more pronounced. Because he's tired, man. Little Thomas gets no sleep. He's too busy covering for Lawrence. He's too busy planning their road ahead. He's too busy cooking dinner and setting up the tent, doing the stuff. He just 
Gets no breaks. Thomas is worn out, man. He's worn out. He's tired. He doesn't know, you know, when things are going to slow down. He's just, he's just got to keep going day after day. No thank you, no nothing. Sick. Oh, I just realized I got to make sure I check something really quick. Since I'm flying tomorrow, there's like so many logistical things to do. All right, we're back, we're back. All right, this is feeling like Thomas here. The only thing that's kind of messed up is the, uh, I feel like the hair view on the front is maybe not quite tight enough, I don't think. Ooh, all right, Photoshop's getting a little laggy here, a little laggy, but I was doing some pretty insane, pretty insane work earlier on like giant files, so. I'm sure my cache is like wrecked right now. Oh, awesome. Ha! Sick. New patron. Whoever just joined, you're based. You're based as heck. The stream literally isn't possible without you guys. You guys are awesome. And we do really fun activities in the Discord, so let's go. Um, oh, see you later, Salmon. Take care, buddy. <laughs> cool. Dude, Salmon, what what a what an awesome dedicated viewer. Salmon gets big respects from from me. Sam has been here since like day one. I think I did one buddy stream with uh, Modern Day James. And, uh, oh, dude, thanks, OK Planet. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude, Sam Man, I did one buddy stream with Modern Day James, and Sam Man has just been a staple of the chat ever since. What a good guy. Legit, legit homie. Yo, what up, Manipold? Welcome. The only thing we don't have here is maybe the roundness of his face. So we want to either do it with some kind of indication of a shadow. I feel like maybe here where there would be, in theory, a shadow. Um, so maybe we include this kind of line, these kind of, this is a, a cross contour line here as well. So maybe we'll include this cross contour line here and we'll also include one maybe around the nose a little bit just to kind of give it some, some character. And the nostrils are like a little raised on the side. Yeah. All right. Here we go. I think this, this is, this is Thomas here. The only thing incorrect is his hair. So what we're going to do is just grab him. Copy him over and get Funkalicious with it. Just get all this energy in here. Yeah, and if you guys are drawing along to the stream, you're doing a great job. Props to you for jumping into art today, man. Art can sometimes be hard to start, but glad you're doing it. Whoa, I just like checked back on the cam and got to like adjust a short hair. I got my hair cut yesterday by my barber, if you can believe it, named Jojo Jenkins. 
My barber's name is Jojo Jenkins. And the barber shop is Blind Barber. So I got my hair cut by Jojo Jenkins at the Blind Barber. That's a real, that's a real thing that happened to me. So there you go. Milky Peach says, glad I was able to join on a stream finally. Oh, welcome. You're so welcome here. Glad you caused live stream as well. Yeah, for real. For real, that happened. 100% that happened. I feel like he's never this passive. I feel like his eyes need to be a little wider. Sometimes when you're drawing an expression for a character or you're drawing a, a doing a drawing for a character and you're like, this doesn't feel like the character. Sometimes it's not likeness. Sometimes it's actually their behavior and their expression. Like, is it believable? It doesn't, doesn't feel like him until I just opened his eyes a bit more. Now it feels way more like him. We do like a little highlight cutout. Doink. Yeah, there he is. There's a, our boy Thomas, sad as heck, tired as hell, doing his best. Thankless, a thankless job. Poor buddy. <laughs> yeah, there he is. Look at him. He's just a little guy. Of course, we have his cool little medieval-esque cape. The medieval-esque pattern. Then they would start to angle off here. See the underside maybe of one. Get that Pringle effect. Shout out to the boy Thomas for that one. The, the, the adult Thomas, Thomas Chamberlain Keen, the homie. Oh, hey, she's gotta go. Welcome, glad you joined, sorry to see you go. Milky Peach says, I wonder what the origin of naming your kid that. Yeah, like if your last name was Jenkins and you name your kid Jojo. But here's the thing. It could have been Jonathan, right? Or like or like Joseph. Joseph Jenkins. I mean, that's not so bad. But Jojo? Jojo Jenkins? Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Michelangelo says, do you do a lot of writing before you get into drawing, a, drawing concept art? Hmm. That's a great question. I think, uh, I think honestly less than you'd think also more than you think. Cause like writing, I feel like, well, there's the version of writing that we're talking about, which is you sit down with a pencil and paper or a pen and paper or with your typewriter or your computer and you're writing words out and you're writing a story. And then there's the kind of version of writing where, you know, we're thinking about the story and we're coming up with the story and you know, being a writer, not everything is happening on the page. Things are also happening in your head before they hit the page. Things are going through your imagination before they hit the page, but it's still the process of writing. So for me, I do a lot of writing. Not all of it's on the page, but a lot of it is. But a lot of it is just in my head and it stays there. And I feel like if a good idea stays in my head for long enough, then I, I have to put it down on paper. And when I do, it's really thought out and it really is a uh, solid. Yeah, it's like solid. It's very well thought out. Has purpose, has meaning, significance to me. I believe it's true. But if the idea just kind of fades, then maybe it wasn't meant to be. 
sometimes people put things down on paper and they feel like this need of like, oh, well now I have to finish it, but it wasn't really good to begin with. So I give it some time to kind of stew in my head a little bit. Have I lost ideas to forgetfulness? A little. Maybe. I don't know. If, if I have, I've forgotten already. So problem solved. Abe asks a question, which I will read after this transform wants to work. Okay. Abe asks, were you ever designing iterations for one character, but you pushed it too far and ended up becoming a different character that fits the world and liked it? Oh, dude, all the time. Are you kidding me? That's how I came up with the pirate captain for my sky pirate world, which I am way too lazy to pull up right now. Or am I? But da ba da da Kale's pulled up. Huh. Oof. We're lagging, guys. We are lagging right now. Way too many applications open. Let's quit some of these out. Boyos. <laughs> Inshallah, that helps. Also, Nabs is here. Welcome, Nabs. All right, all right. There we go. I already feel it picking back up again. Nope, still laggy. That's fine. So you guys don't know this, but I'm working on an absolute hero of a computer. I'm working on the $700 M1 Mac Mini, and it is just going, man. This computer's diesel. All my art is on an external hard drive. I got the base model. It was supposed to be a temporary computer, and it's just, <laughs> it's just, uh, it just keeps on going. It just keeps on living. <laughs> so... I've just been using it, man. The $700 Beater M1 Mac Mini. It's just still kicking. So that's good. Cool, cool, cool. There we are. All right, so let's look at these punk pirate designs. So we're talking about pushing an old character pretty far. Let's take a look here. So I did... Let me see if I can find the actual sketches. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. These are all old sketches for a world-building project called Sky Pirates. I've done a few videos where I've worked on characters from it before. This is Kel, all this line art iteration. Ra 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 ra. It's all the same. You can see how many how much I agonized over it. So let's see if we can find. Yeah, okay, okay. So look at this old guy. Look look at this guy I designed. So I designed uh I believe wait, 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 it was earlier than that even. Was it, was it this one? So I think I had this guy. No, it was completely different. This is a whole different guy. Okay, yeah, so it was that guy. So I did this guy, this guy. And when I sketched him, he fell. I was like, all right, he's got brass knuckles and a grappling hook. Like maybe, maybe, okay. And then I was like, all right, well, Maybe I'll make his jacket kind of cooler. Maybe I'll have like a wider stance and we'll give him like a little one shot, little blunderbuss type pistol. Or maybe he's got the dual, the dual brass knuckles. I don't know. But the more I sat with it, the more I kept pushing it. And as I kept pushing it, I got to this other design, which this guy. And I was like, whoa, who's this guy, dude? All of a sudden his jacket's way cooler. He's got this powerful stance. I'm like, this guy. I was like, is this guy? He looks like a captain. Is he the captain? And as I kept drawing, I pushed it even more. I'm like, oh, maybe he's got a bird friend. I put the kind of outlines on his thing. I fixed his, his proportions a little bit. You can see I made him a lot more of a leader, a lot more presence. I kind of pushed everything, added some stripes, you know, gave him some more gravitas. And then the outcome of that was the, gosh, can I even find it? This file is a mess. Yeah, boom, the crow captain. This was the first or the final rough version of this character. The crow captain, who I think is pretty badass. He's pretty cool. So when I did this design, I was like, all right, I've, I've, like, I've got this down, man. This guy's like rocking, dude. He looks so cool. And he's got a noir black jaguar pet with raven wings. I'm like, what? This is nuts. So that... Versus the initial drawing, which is somewhere way the heck up here. Yeah, this guy. Like, look at look at the difference here between these two characters. 
Let's make them sit next to each other. So I started with one character and I just kept pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it till I got from guy with weird collar and grappling hook and brass knuckles to the captain of the whole squad. And he's like really cool. And he's got a cool black Jaguar. So that's a pretty big jump. But that was all the same design. You can see this. the nose is pretty much exactly the same here and here. It's the exact same. Certain things are the exact same. I gave him a mustache because got to give him a mustache, right? This is really roughly drawn though, but still one of my favorite designs I've ever done, I think. And I never even really finished it. So that's a cool example of that. Um, but yeah, I have done that. I have pushed a character to the point where they're a completely other character, but it works. That's very common, I think. That's kind of just sort of the design process is you you get to the real idea. You get to where you actually want to be. Ayub said, did you keep the other iterations of secondary characters? Yeah, I haven't found a need for them yet, but I think I, think I will. I mean, I have them there in the sketch form, so I could. Um, it's all about balance. Like if I need secondary characters, I can pull from that as like a cast member, part of the roster. Um, for sure. I'm not precious about things though. Like it's very dependent on, is this what the story needs? Like if the story needs a secondary character like that, then yeah, for sure. But I'm very much like a trim the fat kind of guy. Just cause I did a design doesn't mean it has to be there in the end. Especially if it's going to hurt the story. I feel like the kind of anxiety to include everything comes when you don't necessarily have a body of work you've developed over a period of time. Michelangelo says, I love the process of searching for characters, believing they exist somewhere out there. Oh, dude, 100% completely. They do. They really do. And probably they did like in history in some metaphorical way or another, right? Like you'd be really surprised. All right, so we have a side profile of Thomas here. Our little guy, he's so cute. Look at him go. Beep boop, beep doop, boop, 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 boop. Got the cool pattern for his shirt. got a medieval feel but it's kind of like a modern take on a medieval feel this kind of patterning and stuff i love it man i love it so much oh this is underside wait so this is in shadow in shadow here as well also in shadow bottom of this would be in shadow but i don't know we don't have to do form shadows and stuff here or anything the jaw isn't super defined on this character so we don't really even need to connect it or define it too much, I don't think. Uh, maybe we just want to show that there's some kind of form to the neck. Mouth needs to be a little higher. There it is. All right, yes. Yes. I feel like he always needs to be looking up a little bit kind of worried and both worried and hopeful at the same time you know just looking up just a little bit just enough all right let's see all right well we kind of got him down here a little bit uh we definitely want the front of his want it to be a little bit more of a front heavy design i think than a Man, digital so cool. You can just move stuff around. All right, I haven't drawn this guy in a while, so I had to get it back into my system a little. So we've got him here, we've got him there. A 
we already have a drawing of him at the kind of bottom angle looking down. It's not super one-to-one -one in terms of likeness, but that's okay. Here we can kind of show, or we can sort of maybe get there. Ha, <laughs> sick. <laughs> Sick, sick, sick. Just got some good news. Okay. Maybe we do like a looking up pose, notoriously hard pose, an undershot. It feels strangely warm, but it's like supposed to be really cold. It was freezing today, but I feel a little warm. Maybe I'm just nervous. Nervous about traveling tomorrow. Ooh. Louis says, oh, are all these characters part of a story you're making? Always. Characters I make are always part of a story I'm making. That, that much is true, has been true, will be true. All that good stuff. So after Lightbox of this year, I'm actually going to be doing a big cleanup, and I'm going to be basically a lot of the projects that I have that are in development, you know, kind of not so developed or whatever, like a lot of them, I'm actually just gonna, I'm just gonna stick them on a hard drive and just leave them maybe for the future. I don't know, but I kind of want to have a new pact for myself after this Lightbox expo to kind of just like anything I start, I'm just gonna finish no matter what degree of finish I'm gonna do, it's gonna be finished and it's gonna be posted because I'm sitting on too many projects right now. It's inefficient. When I was consolidating my portfolio this year for Lightbox, it was like, man, I realized just how many rough ideas I had and how I had very few like actually defined. And I feel like it's better to just put out one good idea a month every year than to come up with like 10 good ideas a month and finish none of them, you know? I said it before, I'll say it again. It's so easy finishing stuff for clients, but it's pretty hard finishing stuff for yourself. Um, especially, I don't know, if you're someone who loves to just keep going and going and going. For me, it's like, I just want to keep going and going and going. And, oh, but what if this? But what if that? And a new character and this. And the world's bigger now. And there's another area. And there's a whole other thing. And, and then what happens if this happens? And, you know, you just want to keep on building the world forever and, you end up unable to actually produce anything towards the end. So this year, it's going to be a big part of my focus. I'm going to try and talk to, if Gregory Manchez is at Lightbox, I'm going to try to really get a second with him. Ask him about how he completed Timberline. I mean, I kind of have an idea. I've, I've seen a lot of interviews with him, but... My goodness. I've been recently in love with this French artist. I know, French. However, before you get all judgy, um, <laughs> his name is Alex Alice, and he produced this world uh, called Castle in the Stars, which, first of all, great name, because people who can't remember Ghibli correctly will just be finding your art, which is pretty cool. Um it's a joke but I'm also drawing this incorrectly I'm noticing but yeah so Castle in the Stars is this amazing world about what if in the late 1800s they went to the moon or they could actually go to space rather and uh, it's so interesting the actual story is told in more of a comic form but the paintings that this artist does for their world building is insane. Okay, Plenty said, lol, my head pivoted when you said the name. Exactly, right? But um, but it's but it's good. And it's French, so maybe maybe the Ghibli Ghibli film is named something different over there. I don't know. We can give them the benefit of the doubt on that one.
being super loose with the hair here because we don't want to get invested in any any of these forms or shapes we want to kind of as we're drawing them figure out which ones are correct i've never drawn this character in this pose before so you want to leave yourself room to find or at least for me i like to leave myself room to find those correct shapes that feel really right because of course we have the bang coming in front but we also want to add the other bits that stick and proing out available as well There we go. You know, with the features and finding likeness, it's tough, man. Like, until I looked back and figured out, oh, this nostril actually extends to the center of the eye. That's how big the nose is. So in this drawing, too, I also have to do that. Otherwise, it'll feel off. Little things like that really matter. Also, the peak of the nose would, I feel, be much more here. Let's do a quick time check. All right. Definitely running out of time on my end, so we're going to have to end the stream pretty soon. If anyone has any last questions, now would be a great time. Last question before next week, guys. I'm not going to be able to post for another week. Wow, so sad. Adam Strawberry says, Hi, Gabriel. Love your stuff. Do you have any written world building are any world building in written form or just visual world building right now just the visual but believe it or not i'm actually going to be doing a lot more written stuff going forward which is exciting it's looking like streaming and doing youtube and doing the uh character challenges with the discord group and you know patreon the patrons and stuff like you know this is really actually adding up so Milky Peach says, have you made a brush set? So the brush set is still in development. It's still in beta form. However, that beta form of the brush set is currently only available in the resources section, resource and inspiration section of the Discord, <laughs> which uh, you have to join through Patreon to get. So if you want to try the beta brush set, which is just this, it's uh, my fun sketch brush and some modified brushes that I use. It's nothing too crazy. The brush set's coming soon enough, I guess. Of course, Adam, I got you. Michelangelo says, will you be having a showcase at Lightbox? I'm considering going since I'm close by. So for me, not showcasing this year, not tabling this year, there is absolutely no time. Um, but for me, and no showcase this year, but who knows, man, if the channel pops off, maybe Bobby will invite me to do something. Okay, Plenty says, do you have any tips on, tips to work faster or more efficiently? Well, you know what the U.S. Army says, fast or, or slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And I love that saying. I think it's there's a lot of real value in it. Wait, this eye is too close. All right, we're slowly figuring out how to get likeness into this into this zone here figuring it out together guys in terms of the forms and stuff putting a lot of effort into it drawing on a model this is part of character design because if you've never drawn a, uh, one of your characters from a certain angle you are designing what they look like from that angle so it's part of the process 
Um, tips to draw fast. Man. Yeah, I think that it's going to be a lot of practice. Like for me, what I can draw fast is stuff that I know, right? Stuff that I know really well, I can draw fast. But when I can't draw fast or when I don't know what I'm drawing, it's not good for me to draw fast. However, I can do certain forms. So for instance, I don't know how to draw cars, right? No idea how to draw cars, but I can draw forms in perspective because I've practiced. So maybe I do like a, like, like a shape and I connect it and it's in perspective. So it's on a plane here and I do the back wheels as well. And maybe the tires are weird and they kind of stick out and do a weird thing. So contour lines will be that way you know they'll disappear here but you'll see them here and you know maybe there's a organic form holding it together and the organic form kind of curves up a little bit and maybe the windshield of the car is in the front and I know that form this oval will connect over here and this is the part that goes up and over so if this is like a dome and this is like a glass thing then maybe this would be a break in the glass and the pilot would be here and you know I can sort of cover up this wheel with a shape here and I'll do the same on this side and you know but you'll so you'll miss this part but you'll see the interior part on the other side though and uh, maybe the maybe this part goes back here and I'm thinking about the form right so this is a box, obviously, and I'm like designing within this box, this car. But even just drawing the plane that it's standing on helps a lot. You know, and then maybe there's like a big gun on the side. Except that might cause damage here, so the barrel would be like forward here as well. Forward. If this was that kind of design, which maybe it's not. Maybe it kind of snakes back, and actually this car is, maybe it's a lot bigger, and there's actually a l much larger wheel on the back here, and and it actually pulls a, a train car that goes off into the distance, so off and away. Maybe, right? I don't know. So I don't really know how to draw that stuff, but I do know how to draw forms in perspective, and if you know how to draw forms in perspective, you can, you can get pretty far, usually. Um... So practice drawing just forms in perspective. I think if your drawing fundamentals are strong and you just kind of know what you're doing in, in that regard, that'll take you really far in terms of being able to draw faster and work faster because your ideas are in your primary focus and the drawing part is automatic since you know how to draw forms in perspective. Um, Tabby Whiskers, Whisks, sorry, not Tabby Whiskers, Tabby Whisks says, do you have any advice on posing characters in a way that represents them? Uh, been finding that tricky when making ref when making references recently. Well, this is great. So if you're a character designer, you're also an actor. That is part of the job. You are an actor. So because you are the one creating this character, posing them, and making them do actions, that is you. You are the creative force behind that. So being in touch with your own body and, and your own expressiveness is actually very useful when it comes to character design. For me, I do have a dramatic background. I think that's why I can even <laughs> like do YouTube in, to begin with is that um, I'm like used to performing and doing comedy and stuff. And like, you know, I, I took dance in high school and everything. So for me, that stuff is a part of character design that I love. I love the part of it that lets me be an actor again. Um, all this needs to just get moved up, I think. Yeah, so posing a character to represent them, I think you need a more complex understanding of yourself and of like actual just acting, what characters do when they're angry, when they're happy, when they're sad. Um, any kind of research into philosophy or psychology is going to help you with your character design uh, because you're going to understand people better. If you understand people better and you understand fictional characters better because fictional characters are oftentimes just simplified real people right with a much clearer purpose 
and uh, maybe your character is super three-dimensional, but the only way you know that is by the script, maybe. But, on its face, right? But posing characters, like, if you have a sad character, you don't have to be like boohoo, hands in the eyes kind of energy, right? Like, you don't necessarily have to do that for the posing of your character. But there are a few things that really help. So, like, if your character is confident and brave and facing the world, well, actually, let's use the example that we came up with uh, not too long ago. Let's pull it up. <laughs> let's pull it up. I think this will be good. I believe. All right, it's opening up this giant Photoshop file. Gosh, I put things in too big of files these days, man. All right. All righty. Gosh, really taking a while to open. I probably should have restarted Photoshop before starting the stream, but here we are, baby. Let's go. So in this vein, I guess we could talk a little bit about some other stuff just while this file is opening. Gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been such a treat to practice character design and stuff with everybody live. Like this has been great. This is my 46th, 46? Yeah, my 46th stream. Like that's insane. 46 times going live and each one is at least like an hour or so. That's a lot of hours and it's been so incredible getting to know everybody in the chat and for, we you know, everybody who's hopped in the Discord. I think we have like 50, 50 members now in the Discord, which is great. Everybody's so kind to each other and it's such a positive space. Um, it's really incredible. And uh, honestly, this is, <laughs> I took a break from freelancing to try YouTube and I have never been more fulfilled in my art in a very long time. So it feels really good to be doing this. Michelangelo says, "Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. I'll try to share in your fo try to share in your focus of starting and finishing projects. Let's go, dude. Well, because I remember hearing this advice from I don't know if you guys know Nathan Folks, but Nathan Folks is a very, very skilled visual development artist and visual development artist and background painter for DreamWorks. Also, we got our file, baby. Let's go. Um, and he's incredible. And I got a chance to ask him some questions personally, and uh." one thing that he mentioned is that he has no unfinished pieces like zero like none oh that was a paint over i did for somebody briefly yeah here we go this is the sheet for commander corvus that was still in development gosh all this stuff man should have been finished is what i'm talking about too many things left unfinished so here we go so someone asked about posing your characters right and i did this designed the set of three characters on stream a little while ago out of this initial design I did, right? So Nab says, Nathan Folks is one of my artistic heroes. Marco said, hello, finally catching one. Oh, welcome, Marco. I've been seeing you in the comments. Glad you could catch him, catch one live. Oh, also, guys, definitely like this, this stream. If you guys like the stream and like character design and want to see me do more of this in the future definitely like the stream and uh leave a comment of the stuff that you like so that i know what to keep doing um a large part of why i'm doing this kind of stuff is because of past comments people have left so let me know which is great um so so yeah m3 says all of y'all are so amazing and it's so great to be a part of this wholesome community it's really motivating me in art more than ever oh let's go that's the goal man so yeah, so these three characters, it's the same character at three different ages. I love doing this kind of stuff, man, because 
um, when you're thinking about a character and like their story, it's good to see right in front of you who they were and who they will become. And this is a very, very compelling lineup, in my opinion, because there's a lot of strong themes here. There's the theme of light, discovery, and this kind of like illumined prowess, right, of like knowledge and everything, right? And this implies darkness, obviously, is the foe here. So we had a character here who's posed, and they're looking a little bit down at this sword that they found, maybe, or it's been bestowed. We're still figuring that out story-wise. Um, you know, they're in pretty kind of plain clothes, but they're fairly... They're fairly, they're looking down. They're a little more hunched over. They're not like sad or scrunched or like, this is my precious. They're not in a golem pose, but they're like, huh, what, like, what is this? I'm curious. I don't have knowledge yet of this. Um, they're not shocked by it. They have no prior knowledge. It's fairly neutral, actually. The second pose is one that is much more confrontational. Not only is it facing the audience and facing the viewer, but this character is obviously just facing their own situation. They're, they're looking ahead. They're not looking down. They're not looking up. They're looking straight ahead with a solemn expression. The facial expression is just as important as the whole body's expression, and they work hand in hand. Uh, the anatomy of the arms are a little messed up here, but that's fine. So so this character is here um, looking forward. Their, their head is back. Their shoulders are back. They're standing up. They're holding their sword up high. Now they know what the sword is, and they're looking ahead of themselves, right? But it's, it's a responsibility and it's like a, a brave thing to hold the sword up, right? And they know what it represents and there's some light being cast on his face, some stuff there. And there's wind blowing. But And in the wind, he is straight, right? Even having wind blow across a character has narrative implication. And the, the little friend is no longer above them. They're to the side of them, right? And then here we see a complete unity and prowess. So now he has complete prowess over the sword. He's holding it with one hand. It is his, it is his possession. He now has dominion over this blade, this incredible relic, whatever it is. It has been remade, reforged, it has been upgraded, whatever. He is looking ahead with a smile on his face and determination. So he is not afraid. He, he knows what he's going to do. He feels comfortable and confident about it. His legs are wider apart. His shoulders are back. He's much more relaxed. And now he has a complete relationship with the, with the, uh, the little light creature, right? So... Those are all things that I took into consideration when posing these characters for this lineup. This I did off stream. I have my best ideas off stream, obviously. It's very hard to do this live. <laughs> like concept art, it's very hard. But, you know, it's good. But uh, yeah, so this was, um, that was a lot of what went into these poses in particular. And then building out a lineup for the kid characters, because that was something we had to do. Uh, here we go. Do I have a version? Yeah. So we took the middle kid, right, which is kind of maybe where he gets his friends, and we designed them out. We had this kind of interesting motif between them, but we ended up rearranging them to create some kind of relationship. So what we ended up doing was we ended up having the main character named Lucian, which is light in, gosh, Latin? I don't even know. So Lucian. And then we have two other characters, and the main character is actually Mute, the one on this side is deaf and he's got a lantern and the one on his, the main character's right is blind. So they can't see, but there's like some magical motif. So their dynamic is really interesting on how they communicate. They don't really know how to communicate properly. Um, but that's part of the di their dynamic and it's all around light pretty much is, or the lack thereof. And we added a cat to have a relationship with little spark. And uh, we added, you know, some kind of maybe envious, energy from this character looking at the sword he's like why didn't the sword choose me this is our comic relief narrative character who will be delivering comedy exposition with their cat and all that stuff so we've got a complete trio here uh fit for you know a children's tv show or fit for a, a children's feature feature film and animation or something so we have enough here to build a script around pretty much um and all of this is told through body language right this character's leaning back holding this cat up smile on their face uh oblivious but in a good way which means when they get serious, there's even more impact, right? And then we have the deaf character who is on looking, uh, completely oblivious to their surroundings, can't hear anything kind of in their own head about it. And it is doubly mirrored by their relationship with the longing and maybe wanting after the, the position or being chosen by the sword of light or something. Who knows what's actually happening? We haven't decided yet, but they're in there. And he's carrying the, the bags and the burden. So he's carrying the burden. So there's another element of him maybe becoming resentful. It's kind of Samwise maybe, who knows? But yeah, so I wanted to show that as an example for that. Going back to our boy, Sebastian, our stressed out boy. Oof. Yeah, this looking up pose is really 
it's a it's a challenge but we're we're doing our best For sure. Hope that was helpful. Um, yeah, definitely hope that was helpful. Thank you guys so much for liking the video and stuff. And and if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Three streams a week. All the VODs are available for free. Anyone can watch the VODs. Anybody, anybody can enjoy any of that content completely, completely free of charge. And if you want to support the stream, if you feel compelled best avenue to do that is number one actually sharing with a friend if you guys think you know another artist friend who would enjoy this kind of content definitely send it their way that would be amazing and uh if you want to support in a very tangible way you can uh support the patreon three bucks a month pretty pretty darn pretty darn cheap half a new york coffee baby let's go <laughs> Yeah. And join us for all the awesome challenges we do. Like I wanted to make sure that it was like super value, man. Like if you actually look at it versus like for the value, like <laughs> it's really good. It's really, really good. Um, yeah, cool. But no pressure, no pressure at all. Very grateful for everyone just for tuning in and, and, and learning. Like I'm grateful that people are learning, grateful to be in a position where I can be of service in this way. It's pretty huge. Javier says, I'm an aspiring artist myself, and at the beginning part of the journey, these videos are awesome. Love seeing your thinking process. Thank you for your time you're putting in and sharing your wisdom. Oh, dude. All wisdom is gained from other wise people. Wisdom is wisdom. Thank you so much. Just passing on what I have learned from other people who are also generous with their knowledge. Ray Balderstone says, this community is so wholesome. I'm so glad I came across it. Oh, I'm glad too. Let's go. Kitano Ken says, hey, everyone. Hey, Kitano Ken. Nab says, and a full German Starbucks coffee too. Even cheaper than that. Oh my gosh. I gotta come to Germany. Germany Starbucks lore. Maybe we can do a little open mouth expression on this side for the looking up. He's like, huh? He's like, what? It's like, what? what's happening? Cool. All right, guys, we're going to have to end the stream. I don't want to leave. I've been like late to so many things this month just because I don't want to end the stream. <laughs> like I, my planning is so like <laughs> to the, to the absolute, like I'm so busy that it's like just, it's, it's in like the minutes, man. It's in the minutes. And, uh, so like, uh, <laughs> When I like when a stream runs long, like I'm, I always end up showing up late to stuff, and I'm like so sorry, and, you know. But I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Okay, one thing we should have done much earlier is flip the canvas because that shows us everything we've done wrong here. But hey, I. 
eyes are a little big actually. That's one issue as well with this particular drawing. The looking up angle. Also the knowledge that the teeth would recede back in space in the same way. All right, we'll return to this guy and maybe figure that out. I just don't want to stop. I want to keep going. I want to figure it out. All right, that'll have to do for now. We'll have to return back, make it work later. But let's just do some loose sketches here for a minute, just for fun, for funsies. Because we're allowed, man. We're allowed for funsies. Marcus says, I really like the coat. The shape is so fun. Are they leaf? Yeah, that's like an old medieval pattern. That was pretty, that was like a common kind of print pattern to um, adorn this kind of tunic, this kind of like hooded tunic. They would do this, this pattern. You'll see it a lot, especially in old media, like old Robin Hood movies and stuff. You'll see it. It's good. Good to date a character, you know? It works. But what's interesting is that this is actually taking much, this is taking place in a much later era than would require that, that pattern. So it's kind of almost like a retro pattern in this era. But it's sort of to distinguish his status as like a squire rather than an actual warrior. I see. So cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, Marco. We love costume. Costume is huge. I think costume design might be, or like clothing characters, it might be like the first self-study gumroad I do, like a small paid gumroad or something, because costuming characters is really tough. Or maybe I'll make it a demo, like a demo with an assignment or something. This sketch has his hair like much more over his eyes. It's very like, tonight will be the night that I will fall for you. But that's okay. Maybe we do one where he's actually like He's like pushing his hair up And he's like looking at something maybe He's like what? It's like, what is happening? I 
Jules Rondell says, recently found your videos and I've been binge watching all your live streams. Great work as always. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, Jules. Dude, the binge watchers, you guys are like the real champions, man. Because those watch hours stack up and like I need watch hours to <laughs> for my channel to get monetized. And uh, I think like you need a total of 4,000 watch hours to get monetized. And let's see what we're at. See what we're at right now. Let's take a look here. We're at 3,821, which is insane. People have been watching my videos for th over almost 4,000 hours is insane to me. That's crazy. That is insane. You guys are awesome. So I'm almost there. Wow, that's crazy. Ken says, heard about the Twitch and YouTube live mix. You know, I've thought about it. I just don't like Twitch, man. I just don't like the vibe over there. And what's interesting is I keep getting proven right because everyone that joins the Discord from YouTube, everybody who joins the Patreon and joins the community or even just comments or is around like are just so kind and so like just humbly wanting to improve at art, just like me. I just want to improve at art. This is like a method for me to improve continuously. So like, I don't know. I love the YouTube community. Twitch is like, Oof. Even though it'll take a little bit longer for like a live audience, maybe. I know once I start doing videos on YouTube, things will pick up a lot because um, based off the comments and stuff, like not a lot of people are focusing on the same thing I'm focusing on and um, which is nice. So like people, there's a lot of value in it, which which is great and hopefully more people start talking about this stuff because there are so many art YouTubers, man. There are so many. And it feels like they're all saying the exact same stuff, which no shade, dude. It's good stuff, but there's also more stuff. Ken says, I just use YouTube. Wish every Twitch streamer switches, but chat and donation seems better for Twitch forum from what I heard. Yeah, I don't really like the donation format. Do, like donating to people live feels weird to me. Like, I don't know. I much prefer that like I can host a space and like people by supporting get to like contribute and be a part of that space. Like the Patreon Discord, I feel like is a much better much better uh vibe than accepting random donations i don't know it also puts a lot of pressure to be like entertaining live which means you're going to be like that kind of personality maybe i don't know i just feel like twitch is much more instant gratification rather than like real wanting to learn but that's me. That's like my opinion, man. I don't even know. I don't even know if that's true, but all I know is I'm really happy being on YouTube. Everyone on YouTube is so kind, so wonderful, so lovely, very humble, very humble vibe here, man. Cause I'd rather get a guy who's like just come off of learning about like the Byzantine empire and like wants to get better at world building. I'd rather get that guy than like somebody who's watching a hot tub stream and then comes and <laughs> starts watching me draw, you know, like, just way different energy, way different vibrations, man, you know? Hey, you've said, okay, I'm on a boss Gabriel playlist on repeat. Oh, dude, <laughs> you're a legend. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe in this shot he's like pushing his hair back. And he's like holding something. I don't even I don't even really know. Gosh, we really should just stop the stream, shouldn't we? I'm like incoherent right now. <laughs> oh man maybe we draw a quick evil guy for fun the potential enemy for these guys who's like <laughs> I saw recently this hairstyle where like it's like almost balding but it's still kind of pushed to the side so there's like an interesting kind of shape happening in the hair where like there's a receding hairline, but it still looks kind of smart a little bit. Maybe that's this guy's vibe. He's like, <laughs> I will get you. I'm going to get you, this little sneaky guy. Making characters villainous is an art in and of itself, which I'm super excited to teach. There he is. This guy's cool. I feel like he would use one of those like kind of foil kind of rapiers, you know? One of those kind of like interesting interesting weapons, I think. But I like this guy. He's got some fun shapes. Alright, this can be our our working villain that we can finish designing. Maybe when we return back from Lightbox, who knows? Haha, <laughs> it's a lot of fun though.
Yeah, man. Thank you guys so much for all the love today. It's been really, really great. Uh, I had a lot of fun this stream. We talked a lot about different kind of ideas. We went over a couple demos and stuff and where we reviewed a couple designs, but this wasn't really a super like, let's make a whole bunch of stuff this stream. This was very, very like uh, purposeful, pointed, and we got some stuff done. We did a little side view of our boy, young Thomas. We got him looking correct over here. So we got the side view down, feeling very strong. Up view, eh, eh, it's, it's getting there. It's getting there for sure. Need some work. I kind of see some stuff now. Whenever I stop live, I always see all the mistakes. I'm like, oh my gosh, how could I do that? Um, but yeah, these two, they're a lot of fun. There's a lot of potential here for these two characters. So hopefully we can continue <laughs> exploring that potential. But yeah, much love everybody. This has been a really, really fun stream. For those of you who are new, welcome so much. Consider taking a look back at an older stream. Um, and for those people who are returning viewers, you're awesome. I love you. Welcome back. So yeah, if you're watching this live, you're an absolute legend. Thank you for watching this live. If you are watching the VOD of this, you are also a legend. Thank you so much. Shout out to all the lurkers. I love you guys. Shout out to all the people in chat. Thank you so much for the great conversation. You, you're all fantastic and wonderful. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for all the wonderful comments. Um, <laughs> if you if you want to let me know what you liked from this stream or what you want to keep learning about definitely let me know in the comments i'll gear the streams towards that for sure but i feel like we had a lot of fun today and uh yeah this was cool just some light character sketching and talking about some cool fun ideas uh yeah guys this is really really fun definitely subscribe definitely like the video and if you want a spot in my course um there's only two left and it's gonna start in two weeks so so yeah that's pretty exciting <laughs> I haven't been like marketing it too heavily, so it's cool. I kind of just, you know, the people who really want to do it, I want them to take it. So I've been like pretty <laughs> not super, you know, in everybody's face about it. But yeah. But yeah, you guys are awesome. Much love to everybody. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Alrighty. Peace.